Welcome to Stuff and Whiskey. I'm Josh. And I'm Aaron. And today we're talking about bottles that we've recently finished and whether or not we would buy them again. Welcome to the channel, bringing a real world perspective to the real world whiskey consumer. Today, we're talking about bottles we've recently finished and whether or not we would buy them again. We think that's a super helpful topic to get that experience. But before we get into that, we have to get into the first sip, which yeah, is a, a new segment. Not so new anymore. Not so new anymore. No. We've been doing it since December where we have a single sample pool instead of our head to head matchups. These are single samples and they're blind but we've also never tried them before. So we're not familiar with how they taste or should taste. Mm -hmm. Some are available, some are allocated. Let's get into it. All right. Okay. <laughs> it smells like stinky feet. Really? Yeah. I'm just getting like, like really candy fruity sweetness. Less feet, more socks, stinky socks. <laughs> I'm literally just getting like straight up candy fruity sweetness. It's very apple juice-esque. I me. mean, I get that now on my like second, third nose, but my first nose was like, yeah, there was like a stinky socks to it. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm I get going, that a lot. I'm going apple juice with just a little hint of oak on the back end. Let's try Let's it. Let's get into it. I can get apple juice in the flavor, alcoholic apple juice. <laughs> That's what it tastes like. Yeah, alcoholic apple juice is really accurate. Yeah, there's there is some spice there and I was trying to decipher what it was, mm -hmm. but it comes in right on the front of the palate with that apple juice sweetness, and then it pretty quickly switches over to this spicy burn. And I, I was trying to decipher, is that black pepper? Is that barrel spice? Or is that like alcohol? And to me, it's just alcohol. straight up ethanol alcohol yeah. burn. Almost like you would imagine if you drink rubbing alcohol, like yeah. what you think that would feel like. Mm -hmm. Yep, 100%. Although the viscosity, I'm getting more oak on the second second nose. Like the the oak is is more prevalent on the nose after taking a sip. Interesting. One more sip here. I've had a couple, and I think I agree. It's apple juice and then like alcohol. It's not bad though. Like it's it's enjoyable. Second sip, that ethanol alcohol burn is still there, mm -hmm. but it's tamed down a little bit. And what I'm getting behind that is just, is that oakiness that just kind of rides out. Yep. And the finish is hanging around. It's, this doesn't seem like it's particularly high proof. The finish is sticking around more than I think it would with a low, what seemingly is a low proof pour yeah. like this. Um, so it's probably a, a deceptive yeah. high proof, I bet. Yeah, I'm gonna take one more sip. We like to give these first sip segments. I like to give them three sips. You know, the first gets you acclimated to what you're drinking. The second, you kind of, decipher and then the third is where you kind of reinforce your findings or not. Mm -hmm. My findings are the same. Apple juice, alcohol, but but good. Man, I can't get over that alcohol burn. Let's find out what it like is. Like that ethanol burn. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. Well, we got to rate it first. So oh, yeah, yeah. nose flavor experience, where are you at? Um, it gets a thumbs up on the nose, um, thumbs up on flavor. And just okay on experience. Like it was fine, but it was also just, it was like just okay. Yeah. I think I'm thumbs up on the nose. I do enjoy the nose quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, I think I'm just okay on flavor and just okay on experience. I almost could go thumbs up on flavor, mm -hmm. but that that alcohol sharpness is just not my favorite. Yeah. If it was barrel spice that. or something else, it'd be a different ball game. But yeah, not in love with this pour. Uh, I, if I never tasted it again, I wouldn't particularly mind. You wouldn't cry? Yeah, I wouldn't cry. Let's find out what this is. All right, let's. This is, <laughs> this is Dickel Eight Year Bourbon. Oh, wow. I don't wow. know what that means. So George Dickel, I didn't get any, is that minerality? Okay, so this smells like bourbon. All right, thanks to Eric David Gunderson, the man with three names for dropping off this sample. Actually, earlier today, and we entered it into our single sample pool and we've got a ton of stuff in there. It's a wonder that this was the first thing that came up. Yeah. But a lot of people talk about this. This is 90 proof. Okay. It's around $30 a bottle, just okay. a smidge over $30 okay. a bottle. They call it bourbon, even though Dickel is Tennessee whiskey. And okay. a lot of people note like an orange minerality okay. type of note to it, or they'll say it tastes like Flintstone vitamins. I didn't get that in this I class. I didn't get that either. 
Interesting. Yeah, I don't get it on the nose. I don't get it on the palate. I wonder if that sharpness that is like that alcohol sharpness is what some people read as minerality. But George Dickel says that this product, they named it bourbon instead of Tennessee whiskey because it tastes to them more like bourbon than Tennessee whiskey, even though Tennessee whiskey kind of is bourbon. So we need to get into our our real world metrics is what we call them. Our retail and consumer scores, mm -hmm. which the retail score being the price and the availability and the consumer score being whether we would buy it again or not. Okay. So as far as this stuff goes, like I said, it's 90 proof. It's got an eight year age statement. It's 30, 35 bucks and very readily available. I think in most markets, they're doing a big distribution on this. Okay. So as far as that goes, how are you feeling about the retail side of the equation on Dickel 8-Year Bourbon? And then would you buy it again? So I give the retail side a thumbs up. Good price, good availability. But I would not buy it again, so I'm going to give it a thumbs down Yeah. on, I, on consumer. I think I land in the same place. I think the 8-Year Age Statement and the fact that you're getting it for a good price, I will give it a thumbs up on retail yeah. personally. And then as a consumer, would I buy it again or not? It's going to be a thumbs down for me for 30 or 35 bucks. There's just other things that I would rather have. Yeah. It's not bad by any means. It, it certainly like doesn't taste like Dickel. Throwing your money away. It's for the yeah. good price point, yeah. but I'd rather just spend on other things. And I think this is a product that there are like people are out there loving this stuff. And it's, well, then and it's surprising. It's a great price if you love it. So yeah, if you, if you try it and you like it, it's definitely worth checking yeah. out. And if you like this quick sip segment that we just did, then be sure to check the video description below for a link to our Patreon. Mm -hmm. Over there, we do two uncut videos every week, specifically for Patreon in the bonus content tier. And they're a lot like these quick sips where we just kind of talk about what we're sipping and we can even take requests. We do a more international whiskeys over there. Mm -hmm. So there's all kinds of stuff going on in that bonus content tier. And we have other tiers for other people too, where you can get plugged into our community and you can, what else do we have? You can do the whiskey nerd tier where yeah. you can see the spreadsheet that has all of our scores for everything, everything we've that, tried, everything we tried blind. Yeah. And then we also have a tier where you can get in on our patron only live streams that we do once a month and quarterly we do blind flight nights where we ship out blind flights to people mm -hmm. and we get to do it together on a private live stream and it's a ton of fun you get to get interactive with the channel it's a very cool thing it is cool we it's love fun. doing it yeah it's so fun. check it out in the video description below yeah and if you've tried the the dickel eight year um let us know in the comments below what you thought of it yeah. if, do you like it do you not like it um let, let us know and yeah. give this video a thumbs up while you're at it. Yeah, it's right down there where the comments are. Too. Yeah, you know, you're, you're not far. You don't have to travel very far. <laughs> no. All right, let's get into our main topic, which is inspired by anybody who's a car guy or car girl. Uh, car and Driver, the magazine, they do these tests on cars initially when they come out, but then they have a whole other segment of their publication called their long-term test drives mm -hmm. or long-term road tests. And I always gravitated towards them back when I was big in the cars because when they have a car for a year or two and can tell you about the experience of actually owning it, that speaks so much more to yeah. what, like whether it's worth buying or not versus their first impressions. So I thought, how about we do it in video format? Let's do it. And we've been putting these in our live yep. streams, but we're going to start making them recurring episodes, taking them out of the live streams and making a regular recurring episode. So the three categories we have are would not buy again. Okay. Maybe would buy again. We're not 100% sure if we would or not. We didn't dislike it. We actually probably did like it, but there might be a reason why we're not buying it again. Okay. And then the absolutely will buy would again buy category. Okay. So let's get into our first category, the would not buy agains. And first up is going to be Old Forester 1897. And the other entrant for this video is Maker's Mark Cast String. Neither of these are bad. Neither of these are offensive. There's nothing wrong with either of these bottles. They just didn't particularly impress us they hugely. Us. Yeah. They're not quite in our flavor wheelhouse. The new labeling of 1897 uh, was part of, we mentioned Blind Flight Nights. This was part of our Blind Flight Night. And you're going to see a couple of other bottles pop up that are also, that were also part of that. And 1897, some people really love it. Other people don't love it so yeah. much. We have an old labeling, which you'll hear more about soon in an upcoming video. But this new label is much more banana forward. And it just wasn't really quite in our flavor wheelhouse. Yeah. And for 50 bucks for a bottled and bond product, 
It just didn't really impress us. You want us. something in your wheelhouse. Yeah, yeah, yeah flavor-wise. The yeah. value just wasn't there yeah. for us. And then Maker's Mark Cash Strength, 40 to 50 bucks in our market. Good product. I think this bottle right here was in our very first blind head-to-head -head ever on the channel. Oh, was it? <laughs> against Weller Antique 107. And it, it beat it out for me, I think. I think you might've picked the Weller slightly. I picked this slightly. Interesting, okay. I'd have to go back and watch. Yeah. Don't you go back and watch. Those old videos were not great, <laughs> but. They were fun though. It's that product is fine. I will say as it got near the end of the bottle, it got really, really peanutty. Mm -hmm. And that's a product that I actually like on ice more than, than meat, meat, which is very rare. Yeah. Very, very rare. Yep. Let's get into our may buy again, okay. may not. Wouldn't hurt our feelings if we didn't ever have these again. Yeah. We're not going to write about it in our tear journal. Right. So let's just pull all these in. Okay. How many are there? Three. Three? So, let's go down the line. Cooper's Craft Barrel Reserve, 100 proof. A lot of people really like this product. It's a great value buy at 30 or 35 bucks for 100 proof. I do like it, let that be known. Yep, and funny enough, the 1897 new label and this Cooper's Craft and this Calumet 15 were part of our last blind flight night mm -hmm. because they were all kind of somewhat similar flavor profiles with a little bit of a banana note. Yeah. And funny enough, multiple people, including you, picked the Cooper's Craft As over the favorite. Calumet 15. Yep. So that was very interesting. Three people did, actually. Yep, three people did. You like the Cooper's Craft more than I do. Mm -hmm. I keep going back to it and I do like it, but I have to be in the right mood. It does come across like kind of bananas and, and kind of like a toasted oak. And I just don't a hundred percent love it, That's but fine. the value is so high that we probably will rebuy it, but I'm not rushing out to right. go replace the bottle. Correct. Yeah. The Calumet 15, it's a maybe because it's $120. Yeah. And the more blinds we do, the more you realize that you just don't have to spend all that much money to get a really good pour. Yep. Having a 15 year age statement is nice. And when you're sipping it not blind, it like you can really unpack the flavor profile a little bit better, yeah. but in a blind tasting format, it didn't yeah. blow us away. Mm -hmm. It didn't hit us like $120. Correct, it, it, I agree. It hit me like the best pour in the flight, but not, not double or, yeah, not double or triple cost of what the other products yeah. were. And then Buffalo Trace is in here. We, are, we do like the regular Buffalo Trace mm -hmm. product. The reason this is in here is because our market gets a lot of Buffalo Trace store picks and I would personally just rather buy a Buffalo Trace store pick over the regular standard offering. And right now we've got four or five Buffalo Trace store picks oh, in, our, in our home. I didn't know that. And I'll continue Surprise. to buy the store picks over the regular product. Yeah. Now, if we run out of all of our store picks and we don't have any bottles of Buffalo Trace, I'll rebuy the regular yeah. product. But it's it doesn't blow us away enough to say we're going we to immediately rebuy it. Yeah. yeah. So now we're into our absolutely 100% will rebuys. Um, yes. Rare breed is a given. Yes. 1792 bottled and bond store picks are in our book pretty much a given. Yep. And Eagle Rare. We've had Eagle Rare. We're going to start down here. Okay. Because there's really not much to say about Rare Breed. If yeah. you watch this channel yeah. much at all, you know how much we love Rare Breed. Yes, we're getting it again. <laughs> Eagle, Eagle Rare, we do like more than Buffalo Trace mm -hmm. by a little bit. Um, it is 90 proof. If we can find it again at retail when the bottle's empty and this bottle is empty, <laughs> we will replace it at retail. At retail. 35 or 40 bucks. Yeah. The nose is fantastic. It's great to just sit down and nose this bottle. Not our favorite because of the proof point being so low, but... That is what it is. But if you're wanting a low proof point, it's a good one. Right. And it's a great bottle to share with anybody who hasn't tried it. Yeah. So that's worth trying. And we will rebuy it for sure. Yes. 1792 store picks, the bottle and bond. I mean, it's just a great product. This was in the flight with the Calumet 15 and the Cooper's Craft and the Old Forester 1897. And this was my favorite. I did think the Calumet 15 was a better crafted pour, but I just preferred the flavors in this a little bit yeah. more. It was a little bit more cherry forward than even the so Calumet we will 15. Be buying this again. So yeah, if I see another 1792 bottle and bond store pick, absolutely grabbing one. And then enough said. Rare breed, how we love thee. Yes. Let me I mean, count the ways. What 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 more can be said about rare breed? Not we much. love it. It's probably our favorite wild turkey product. Mm -hmm. It's either that or the rye. You know, Ooh, that ride. Oh, man. 
They're both so good. And he's not a rye guy and he likes it. Yeah. Like I said, this episode idea came about because of that long-term road test from Car and Driver. But we're going to crowdsource you guys right now. Hit us in the comments below as to what we should call this segment, these episodes, these regular recurring, you know, every so often, every yeah. maybe month and a half, two months, we'll have one of these when we have... Empty you bottles. know, <laughs> half a dozen or more empty bottles that we can talk about yeah. that fall into those three categories. But we hope it was really helpful information. It's not buried inside of a live stream now, so you can access it more easily. Yep. Over on the live stream, we were calling it In Memoriam because like the bottles are gone. And that was inspired by the Walking Dead season recaps where they do the In Memoriam of characters they lost. Which, if you don't know, Josh is Rick Grimes, so. <laughs> so we could call it In Memoriam, but there's probably a much better name for bottles that yeah. we finished. Let us know, Yeah, because we're out of creative ideas. Yeah, yeah, we're blanking on this one hardcore, but absolutely hit us in the comments below yep. on that. Hope you guys enjoyed watching. Let's get into our other stuff this week. And our other stuff this week is inspired by this same kind of like long-term road test format. And we are gonna be talking about Blundstone boots. I have these boots, these Blundstones, I'm not gonna set them up here, they're dirty. Yeah. I purposely left them dirty because these are my work boots. Mm -hmm. And I've had everything from like Red Wings and Wolverines and Timberlands and all, I mean, all the, all the high end and some of the top tier or top rated. Yeah or most bought work boots out there. And I bought these Blundstones a while back and they're pretty pricey. They're like 180 bucks. Pretty and pricey. that's a chunk of change. Yeah. You know, I, I was wearing some Red Wing mock, six inch mock toes before this and the the sole wore out fairly quickly, mm -hmm. which is kind of a unknown thing. But these things right here, I left them dirty, but like I've been wearing these boots for probably a year and a half and there's still plenty of yeah. sole left. They're holding, okay. they're holding up to a ton of abuse. And I'm just so impressed with these things. They're yeah. slip resistant. They're slip on. The older I get, the more I love slip on footwear. Oh, dude. I don't have to tie them or anything. I feel that. You can get a steel toed version. And size wise, I wear a nine and a half in most boots like Wolverines or Red Wings. And I wear like a 10 in Converse and a 10 and a half in Nike. These have weird sizing because they're Australian. Oh. These are an eight and a half in Australian sizing. So I basically go down one from my normal boot size and that might be a little small. My toe does get a little crowded in there, especially if I'm wearing thicker socks. Yeah. But maybe a nine would have been the right size, but check Blundstones out. I know it's a lot of money, but if you're somebody who has to be in boots for work and they have a steel toed version, I think they have like a, it's like a polymer composite still like steel toe, but check them out. Um, I love them. I can't recommend them enough. I got those on Zappos and this isn't sponsored. I just really enjoy these boots a lot. Yeah. And those are the super 550s or 555s and they have some super 500s. It's different series, but I think they're all kind of the same, but great boots. Check them out if you need some good boots in your life. Who doesn't? Who doesn't need good boots in Everyone their life? Everyone does. If your feet are happy, you're happy. That's my motto. I agree. Yeah. That's it for this week. Till next week, guys. Cheers. Cheers.